Just when it looked as though the PS4 was going to ride through the rest of the generation victoriously dressed in the bloody remains of what used to be the Xbox One, Nintendo dropped an atom bomb on the gaming world with the Switch, winning back a strange fans and proving that they can still rub shoulders with the big boys after the disaster that was the Wii U. After picking up both of Sony and Nintendo's stellar systems and spending months torn between them like two equally generous lovers though, it's about the right time to dish out some home truths that fans of either console need to hear. Now I know you guys absolutely loved it when I compared the Xbox One and the PS4 in my very first video, which was a terrible, terrible idea in hindsight, so just remember that this is only a bit of fun and based on my horrible, garbage fire opinions. Anyway, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 confessions of a PS4 owner after buying a Nintendo Switch. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 9. Nintendo's exclusives are just as good as Sony's. Since 2014, exclusives like Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn and Bloodborne have given players a reason to pick up and stick with their PS4, while all the classics being remastered like The Last of Us, Crash Bandicoot and Shadow of the Colossus have successfully brought all the masterpieces to a new audience. While Sony is trouncing Microsoft's exclusive output though, Nintendo's library of first party games is putting up one hell of a fight. Right. After a year on shelves, the publisher already has two killer apps under their belt in the form of Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, both of which were considered some of the best titles of 2017. Sony's games are tip bloody top, but when the end of the generation comes around, don't be surprised to see a couple of their big hitters knocked out of top 10 lists by Nintendo's own offerings. Number 8. Sony has the better future roadmap While the exclusive libraries of both the PS4 and the much younger Switch which are ridiculously good. At the moment, I'm more confident in Sony having a slightly more convincing roadmap going into the future. On the horizon at the time of writing, a God of War, Spider-Man, The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, Days Gone, and Detroit Become Human, to name but a few, meaning Sony are pretty much sorted for quality games until the end of the generation. The Switch, on the other hand, has come out the gate swinging, but apart from a couple major releases like Metroid Prime 4, Smash Brothers, and of course the Labo, much of their upcoming schedule is shrouded in mystery. Although faith in Nintendo is stronger than ever, they fail failed to live up to their potential in the past, and as it stands, Sony seems to be the safer pair of hands. Number 7. Graphics aren't that important Alright look, I know back in my Xbox vs PS4 video I made a big song and dance about graphics being important and all that, but you have to bear in mind that I'm a big dumb idiot who doesn't know his ass from his elbows. And yeah, usually I'm the guy who's completely suckered in by buzzwords like 4K, HDR and fidelity, so it completely shook me when I realised I was having way more fun with the Nintendo Switch's, in comparison, far less visually impressive games than I was the flawlessly presented titles on the PS4. Of course, seeing huge games like Battlefront running in 4K with HDR enabled is still enough to elicit a bit of a sex wee, but graphical power doesn't mean much if the game doesn't have the substance to back up its style. Number 6. The Switch is so much better for local multiplayer. Microsoft and Sony have almost rendered the glory days of couch co-op and split-screen deathmatches obsolete, with the majority of titles moving towards online-only multiplayer that encourages people to buy multiple copies of a title, rather than allowing one to be enjoyed by a group of friends. Thankfully though, Nintendo's new machine has gone in the opposite direction in an attempt to champion local play. Not only does the console ship with two controllers, rather than making owners drop 60 bucks just so a second player can join in on the fun, but even the way the system is designed inherently encourages playing with friends. Being able to unclip both controllers and bring in a pal is great, but it's the ability to play split screen either on a TV or using a stand to make the handheld usable for two or more people that makes the Switch such a versatile machine and has resulted in so many lunchtime Mario Kart feuds at what culture. God damn it, Rich, you skilled, hand farting Mario Kart wizard, you. Number five. 
Some third-party Switch releases are almost unacceptable. Even going back to their bullheaded approach to other publishers in the NES days, Nintendo have rarely had the best versions of multi-platform games. However, after the Wii U lost third-party support extremely early on, the publisher has admittedly attempted to build bridges. Straight away announcing that Skyrim and Doom would be coming to the console, the Switch was marketed as being something more than a Nintendo-only machine. Unfortunately, the actual results so far have been the very definition of a mixed bag. Some, like the aforementioned titles, have fared pretty well, but it's clear that some others have been severely hampered by the console's technology. WWE 2K18 infamously ran terrible, literally in slow motion, whilst even remasters of seven-year-old titles like Ellen Noir sacrificed large amounts of visual clarity for performance. Number four, adding an online paywall is a big deal. Although Sony's PlayStation Plus subscription service isn't perfect, and outages and downtime have only reminded users that Sony's infrastructure is nowhere near as solid as Microsoft's. The perks and benefits are still pretty good. Nobody likes to pay for the privilege of playing online, but a constant stream of usually good games, discounts and deals certainly makes the subscription seem worthwhile. Nintendo, on the other hand, while keeping online free, have unfortunately continued to disappoint with online features, with potentially good ideas like the virtual console failing to appear, and the very notion of voice communication being an app requiring mess. The latter is why the announcement of Nintendo getting multiplayer behind an online service later in 2018 has received such a monumental backlash. Yes, we knew it was coming thanks to it being mentioned at launch, but not only are they retroactively adding in a paywall after months of free play, but it comes with few benefits in exchange, completely taking away one major positive they had over the competition. Number three, the ability to switch to a handheld is a true game changer. Look, there's no way around it. The ability to take the Nintendo Switch off its dock and seamlessly continue playing with a handheld device is the future. Yeah, it might not be a big deal for people with dedicated gaming rooms or players who aren't burdened with sharing a TV, you lucky sons of bitches you, but for everyone else, the gaming on the go approach of the Switch is undeniably convenient. In the middle of an intense Mario Kart tournament but someone else needs the TV, no need to abandon it, you can simply clip on the Joy-Cons and continue gaming on the couch. The quality of the small screen, as well as its battery life, is absolutely stellar, and playing handheld isn't at all a lesser experience. In fact, it's gotten to the point where I'm tempted to pick up a goddamn PS Vita just so I can have a similar experience with the PS4. That's how desperate I am. Number two, it doesn't cost a mint to get the full experience. Unlike in previous generations, the past few years have seen Sony and Microsoft embrace new half-step iterations of consoles like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One. Throw on top of that Sony's PSVR, an admittedly great piece of tech that adds an entire new way to play, as well as subscription services out the wazoo, and to get the whole experience, you're looking at far more than the mere asking price of the console itself. Of course, it's all optional. But there's always the creeping feeling that if you don't cough up and get these extras and upgrades, that you're missing out on something. Nintendo, on the other hand, has probably released the most consumer-friendly console on the market. Sure, the decision to get off online features is a mistake, but the embracement of local multiplayer, the accessibility of the console, and the price point all build on the idea that you're getting the full experience out the box. Of course, there are still expansions coming, and the Labo is slated for release soon, but even that new way to play is reasonably priced. Number one. If you are going to own a second console, this is it. As previously lamented, owning both an Xbox One and a PS4 isn't quite the glorious gaming paradise you might think it is. The two machines are far too similar, and outside of a few exclusives, there's no real reason to have both on the go at the same time. However, if there's ever been a reason to pick up that second console, it's the Nintendo Switch. Not only are the exclusives great, but the machine is an amazing alternative to the PS4, boasting functionality that Sony's console just doesn't have. The different ways to use the Switch give it an edge that makes it constantly relevant, and while you still might use the other console the majority of the time, its accessibility and unique gaming experiences ensure that you'll return to it on the regular. So to sum up, they're both bloody good, and please don't kill me for enjoying them. 
Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. Huh, but you should like, share and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content, probably above my head. Check it out. Or don't. 50-50.